Welcome to the WPA OG podcast. This week, we welcome Colonel Darcy Schnack, West Point class of 96, and Dr. Kat Longshore from West Point Center for Enhanced Performance. Colonel Schnack, the director of CEP, and Dr. Longshore, a performance enhancement specialist, will share their insights on how the CEP is transforming cadet development through cutting edge programs in performance psychology and academic support. Hear about their innovative approaches, including advanced mental training tools and unique recovery resources, and learn how these strategies are shaping the future of cadet success at West Point. Please enjoy this episode with our host, Jamie Enos. Colonel Schnacht and Dr. Longshore, thanks so much for being on the show today here. I really wanted to have you both on the WPOG podcast because the set here at the academy, you know, it's so rigorous with the academic, the physical, and the military training programs that the cadets go through. And the SEP, the Center for Enhanced Performance, is it's just plays such a crucial role in helping cadets achieve peak performance in all aspects of their development. So I think that you have such an amazing program that you are running over there. And I think that our grads would just be so interested to hear about what is going on over there. And, you know, we have that picture. Some of us might remember walking through the library and seeing those iconic, the egg chairs, right, that we all reference every once in a while. But it's more than just that. And so love that you're here. Thank you so much for your time. And we can get right into it. Thanks for having us. Thanks. Thanks for being for inviting us to be a part of this. Yeah. So. Can, let's just start from the top. Colonel Schnack, can you give us a an, an overview of the mission and the purpose of the Center for Enhanced Performance? Absolutely. So the Center for Enhanced Performance has three main programs. Those programs today, you, you, we've got Dr. Kat Longshore with us. She heads the performance psychology program. We also have an academic excellence program and an athletic academic support coordinator program. I know that's a mouthful, but those three programs and the kind of the titles of those give you the breadth of what we do in CEP. So we focus on and, and kind of model our mission statement after the Academy's mission statement in that we're about educating, training, inspiring our cadets. But it's really in two areas. We're, we're building leaders of character and those leaders of character, it's through lifelong learning strategies and effective mindset strategies. So those are kind of the two main mechanisms that we're working through those three programs. And so it's overall enhancing one's performance in any of those pillars that we have at West Point. So the work that we do is really across the breadth of the 47 month experience. And what are some of those core programs and services then that are offered? So our academic excellence program is kind of the under, umbrella for our student success course. I'd say that our student success course really though is kind of the bread and butter and that everyone in CEP teaches that course. That course takes both of our academic excellence skills, the things that I, I call them the blocking and tackling of academics. So things like time management, organization, note taking, you know, how you approach a paper, how you get rid of distractions as you're doing your academic work. That course takes those academic skills and blends our mental skills. So within performance psychology, you know, how, what's our mindset as we approach that? How do we use goal setting effectively? How do we manage stress and energy levels? And I'll let Kat talk about that, but that course is something that everyone in CEP contributes to. That is a course designed to help plebes get started in the academic year. They are largely new to college level academics. They have transitioned from their civilian, whatever they did, high school, maybe a little bit of pre, you know, college or other routes into the academy. But they are tra 
doing that transition from civilian to military. Mm -hmm. And for many of them, also from high school level athletics to division one sports. So there's a lot going on. That student success course is geared to help a, a plebe, a freshman at the United States Military Academy be successful, get started without um, kind of getting behind. So the mechanisms that we do our work are through courses, through individual appointments, through uh, work with teams, uh, group sessions. So it's kind of runs the gamut. We have a number of courses and then we do a lot of one-on-one -on -one instruction. Dr. Longshore, the performance psychology is really big right now. And in the last couple of weeks and months, interviewing some of Olympic athletes and, you know, coming out of that season right now, the summer, talking about visualization and relaxation techniques and stress and how to perform high performance under pressure, all things relative to cadet life and life after cadet, right, mm -hmm. of being high performance in the military. What are some of those skills and tools that you're teaching here at the academy? Yeah. So most of what you mentioned, right? Uh, a lot of what you mentioned. So we have sort of an educational model that we follow. And a lot of that is then building, you know, we start with mindset, you know, so we might talk about, you know, when you're performing at your best versus when you're performing at your worst, right? Like what's the difference in those, those things and that there's, you know, can we start to build some, some mental skills to be able to maybe pull out your best a little bit more often, or at least not let the mind kind of get in the way of your performance. And so, yeah, so we'll teach like, you know, uh, effective thinking, like, hey, what's our self-talk like? Is it helpful? Is it unhelpful? Try not to talk about positive, negative so much, but more like what are helpful things to say to ourselves and what are kind of maybe unhelpful, right? What's going to move us forward versus kind of holding us back? And then we talk a lot about, you know, confidence and what are some, maybe some of the sources of confidence? How do we build that? And sort of letting them see it's not like just a you have it or you don't, but it's something you have to kind of always be building and working on as a skill. We talk a lot about imagery, visualization, yeah, being able to see it before you do it, work through challenges. So we have some virtual reality that we can have cadets do where it's kind of amped up imagery where they can see themselves go off the six meter tower or do the IOCT. And so they can get those kind of mental reps before they actually do it physically. Uh, we'll talk goal setting. So, you know, what's your goal? And then how, more importantly, how are you going to get there? And we like to really drill that down to like action steps, right? Of you know, what are the specific things I can do on a regular basis uh, to, to achieve that? Um, we do a lot with stress and energy management, right? How do we, we often draw a big circle, sort of like controllables and say, okay, what's in the circle of control and then what's outside of it? And, and a lot yeah. of our stress comes from thinking about things that are outside of our, our circle of control. So how can we help cadets kind of hone in on that? And then also learn how to deliberately recover. You know, we're not, we talk a lot about sleep, but you're not always going to be able to get as much sleep as you want to. And so what are some other ways that we can recover, whether that's coming and doing the egg chairs, as you said, right, the infamous egg chair relaxations, or it could be also just making a plan for, you know, how often you talk to family or going for a walk or getting a good meal or journaling, you know, meditation, right, things like that. So really kind of trying to teach them skills that they can use. Hopefully, in many regards, we try and teach them the skills before they need them so they can kind of build those things. And then when the challenges hit. They already have some of those skills to meet them. Of course, we also will teach them after the challenge has hit and they need them then right. too. But, right. but we really try and teach those skills even before so that they're well equipped for when those challenges hit. I think sometimes this field is approached as a really soft science, right? And people get like this mushy feel about it because it's not something hard and tangible. And, but then we think about the psyops part of it, of course, and then, and that's okay. <laughs> but I, you know, we, you go out and you train physically and you train your body to do and accomplish tasks, but then, you know, the mind also needs the resiliency to, to match up with that. Is that, I, I know it is part of the conversation, but how do you integrate that with the training of, you know, the commandant and the Dean side of the house when it kind of comes together? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, I mean, a lot of times what we're you're right. Like what you're working on is not always as, it's not as clean as seeing, you know, your one rep max go from 150 to 175, right? It's not as clean as that sometimes or seeing the grade on the paper. 
But we have various ways in which we can kind of measure that those mental skills are improving. One of those is the athletic coping skills inventory. So that's something that we'll give cadets to take before we start with them and then after so they can sort of see some of that data. And they're even always surprised, right? Even though it's self-report, they're still always surprised like, oh, yeah, wait, no, I did improve quite a bit, right? We also, you know, a lot of times it's charting some of that progress. We also, as trainers, do, you know, try and make it a point to show cadets when they've made progress, right? To ask them, hey, how have you seen this impacting you? What's the difference you're feeling? And echo that back to them. And they're usually pretty good at noticing that the training that they're doing is having an impact either on what they're doing or even just how they're feeling. They're like, yeah, I noticed that my mind is more more positive or I just, you know, I'm not looking at for all the bad stuff all the time. I'm like, yeah, okay. So we're getting somewhere, right? So I'd love to hear, do you have any specific like success stories then like that come out of the CEP? The stuff? Certainly. Do you, you want me to go first, Colonel Snack? Sure, please. Yeah. I mean, I, the cool thing is I feel like there's success stories. I, I love that we have to argue about who's going yeah. yeah, to Yeah, who That's already a great start, right? <laughs> yeah. Okay, good. All right, cool. <laughs> well, because I feel like there's great success stories all the time, right? Good. I mean, Lovely. even just recently, you know, you know, there's water confidence course, right? We go out to CFT to summer training. And we just kind of hang out where the water confidence course is. And as cadets are coming through and maybe they've hit a challenge, like whether that be the height part or the, you know, the, the, where they have to, what is it, crawl and they have to hang and then they have to hang for a certain amount of time and then drop, you know, and they come off that first one, they're expected to do it the first time they come off that first one and they feel like a failure. And it's like, well, hold on, let's, this was your first rep. Let's talk about it. Right. And even just that brief intervention, early intervention, you know, they feel better if they get it the next time. So like even just seeing some of those, but even long-term, like we had some where, you know, they had multiple attempts at it. And then finally, like the last day of testing, right. They're able to complete the challenge. And, you know, so those kinds of examples are just fantastic, but you know, we have, let's see, I'll try and think of another specific one. I'll throw it over to Colonel Snack. And I also wanted just to offer in regard to the last question about the work in CEP and how does that complement or how do you see that in, say, the comms lane or the dean's lane? But CEP really does a lot of work across the directorates at the academy. So you might be in a a course in DPE in the Department of Physical Education, but they're going to mention maybe CEP as here is another resource available to you or an opportunity Dr. Cat did a lot of work with the ACT MIAD and contributing in that way uh, in the commandant side of the house, preparing for particular duty positions mm-hmm. in the academic realm as well. So you so so that partnership of CEP and the other directorates you'll see ac- across the academy, and what that does is remind the cadet that CEP can be helpful for me in the leadership lane in in my summer training, I'm preparing for air assault or how does this help me in a physical fitness class? How does this help me in the classroom? And so I think that work across the directorates is really important because then we as a resource are sort of endorsed by the lane that maybe they're seeking help in. That that physical side it also has a mental component. Right. Where that military side has a mental component, the academic side around confidence. And there's a performance psychology aspect to how you do on your math test. So so I think that aspect is really important. I just wanted to you know, mention that in, in regard to your last question. But when you talk about success stories, I think that success can be a baby step for someone to, you know, a cadet I worked very closely with last year was, you know, second in command of cadets and a road scholar and a uh, captain of a D1 athletic team. And CEP was a part of her journey. And she's talked about that in, in other podcasts and in social media. And then it could be with someone who was able to perform on this one event as a plebe in I finally got up the rope in my, you know, PE 117 mill move class. So the, I think you, we have the, 
it's neat that we have the opportunity to see those victories every day. And it could just be, I believe in myself now, moment of, as they leave, like, this self-efficacy that may have not been there before. And that can be as big a victory as, you know, I aced all my classes or I got this scholarship or, or whatever. So I know that's, you know, it, you know, for that cadet, it may be just as big a success, you know, walking into math class, feeling like, you know what, I can brief this problem at the board as it might be for someone else you know, passing, you know, airborne school or something like that. So I think that mental performance is so important in every facet. And we talk about it here that the skills that they're learning and and that we're helping them learn may help them ace a chemistry test. They're the same skills that are going to help them socially, like interacting with their peers and in the company area, and the same skills that are going to help them be clear-headed and confident and lead their platoon while deployed. Yeah. Right. And, And it does, it goes back to that holistic development of leaders, right? It's not just that one area. We have the four pillars here at West Point with the academic, the physical, the military, and the character, and that holistic approach that when you leave here after those 47 months, you, you've got to go on to the next phase and you're going to take this toolbox with you to then kind of not only lead yourself, but then also lead others in the army and go do great things, as you're mentioning. Uh, how do, So do you have those as, as an army officer yourself, Colonel Schnack, how do you feel that directly moves over to the army side of the house, right? As you're preparing them here at West Point and then they go into those roles. You talked a little bit about the platoon leader, but can you go into that a little bit more from, you know, you've got that experience and you can kind of look back as a grad yourself and then also here at West Point, but how do you feel like this is setting them up for that? So I, I even think around just the simple concept of confidence. And so, you know, the West Point Leader Defense development system is going to put cadets in uncomfortable positions, right? We're going to ask cadets to stretch, to maybe take on something that's new to them. That That's kind of inherent in, in the way we develop leaders of character. And so the belief in yourself and your ability to communicate to be able to say, I've got the skills to take a couple of deep breaths right now, maybe bring my heart rate down a little bit because I'm walking out in front of my platoon. And I remember that as, you know, I was a young second lieutenant and my platoon started, a couple of, of my soldiers had had kind of gotten in trouble, right? A uh, couple of different things. And my platoon sergeant was like, ma'am, it's time for you to talk to the platoon. And so, you know, I'm pretty new into the job, but I think about like all of those skills that you learn at West Point that make you feel like, okay, I've got, this is uncomfortable. I'm not used to like doing the knife hand. (laughs) And that's, and that's what I had to do. But I felt I could step outside of my comfort zone because that's what my platoon needed in that moment. And so I feel like those are sort of the skills that we teach in in CEP is like, okay, this is not something, you know, that you do all the time, but when the moment comes, you can answer that call. Dr. Longstreet, you, you're you're nodding your head and I can see you. What do you want to add to that? <laughs> yeah, I just think so much of it, you know, so much of it transfers. Like you're learning all of these skills. And that's where, like you were saying about the holistic part, I think that's something we do really well in the CEP is that we're, we're constantly kind of bringing that into conversation of like, hey, how can you use this in this area? Like when I'm talking to a cadet, you know, a lot of times if we're working on something for a particular event, I'm like, hey, how do you think you could use this over here too? Or what do you do there that works? Let's bring that to this. And so just that like 
transfer that holistic. And so I do have cadets who, you know, I've year after year, the same cadets are coming in and, but this year they want to talk about this. And then the next year they want to talk about this. And so they're realizing that all of these things kind of transfer can, can work for different things. And I think they're taking that, that all then into what they're doing. I also think one of the biggest things, and it's kind of the flip side of confidence or how we develop confidence is that a lot of times they hit CEP because they failed at something, right? There's been some Mm. moment of failure. And to me, like that is essential for a leader to kind of have some idea of what it is to fail and then how to get through that, right? And so then that, and a lot of times that's what we talk, I talk about with them is like, hey, how much better of an officer is this going to make you, right? How is this going to help your ability to be an officer? This failure and this like, figuring it out and getting through that, right? How can you see how that's going to help you later? And so, and they come up with really great answers for that, but really just recognizing like the empathy and compassion that it's built, but then also that like now they have some strategies they can teach, you know, their soldiers who, you know, when they mess up inevitably, that's going to happen. And then they've got stuff to be able to share and say, hey, look, I was human too. Like, this is what happened for me and this is what I did and let's work through it. So yeah, I think that's one way in which I see them really being able to bring those things out. Because I do think this, right, like this generation, this these we need more of that ability to kind of relate and build rapport. And so I think when we've had an experience where we can relate to somebody, that just helps so much more. So rather than feeling like I have to be the perfect person on the stand, right? I don't know that's the leader sure. people relate to as much. So it's like, sure. how can we relate with a little bit of that? Right. I think I- one of the other big takeaways is that this, that there's strength in seeking help. Yeah. And, you know, I say it, I, we brief all the new cadets in the summertime. And one of the things we say is you cannot get through West Point alone. And, you know, we say, I remember the days where I was like, look left, look right. One of those people isn't going to be here when you graduate. Now I say, look left, look right. These are the people that are going to help you get through West Point. And uh, it, it, I think, strikes a chord that I say, when I think about the kind of lieutenant, I want a lieutenant that is going to ask for help and seek out resources and rely on peers or rely on their platoon sergeant or someone who's gone before them. So the idea that we're normalizing you know, seeking help, I think is a really important takeaway from the work that we do in CEP. Because if you think you're going to be that person that can do it all and be perfect, you're probably wrong. You're probably wrong. I think your comment earlier struck me too, when you said that uh, West Point stretches, right? Uh, um, Cadets, they come here, People come here and West Point challenges them to stretch, right? To experience things that they haven't experienced. I've met cadets that have never been on an airplane before. And then they go on an AID and I'll give my AOG plug supported by AOG, (laughs) but they go on an AID and the first time they get on an airplane and they go to Malaysia, right? From New York. And it's like, of all the places to get on an airplane, they fly to, you know, Malaysia across the world on this, you know... 15 hour direct flight, you know, and they've never, ever been on an airplane before. And I just remember thinking, oh my gosh, like, what was that like? What did you feel? And, you know, the cadet saying about, it was a little panicky, you know, because she was stuck on this airplane for so long, you know, didn't know what to expect and all of those kind of things. But, you know, it was a challenge for her to experience that and to, it was a volunteer opportunity and she wanted to do it. And she said, you know, eventually I'm going to have to do this as part of my job. So I might as well jump in and experience it. So that stretch, but to know that there's the resource here to, like you said, reach out and get the support scaffold it along the way so that when you're in the moment, you've got the tools that are there. Cadets can access the CP at any point during their career here at West Point. So how does that happen? Like, what do they do? So there's a, a lot of different mechanisms. I think we're kind of all over the place. And we try to put our feet in those places where they know us. And I'll let, I know that's a big uh, thing that Kat talks about is the relationships that we build with our D1 sports team. So I'll let Kat talk about that. But, you know, we have, you know, from our website to QR codes in the barracks, we've done a lot of effort around 
teaching cadet leaders about what CEP has to offer so they can refer peers. We actually talk to all new faculty here and talk to them about, hey, I'm not going to teach chemistry and I'm not going to help a cadet with calculus. What I will do is help them to read their textbook and how to manage their time and to know, hey, this is where I get my, how, how I read my syllabus and this is how I approach my homework. So, you know, we can help each other. I can help them be better and make use of additional instruction with that teacher. And so, so I want all the new faculty to know about CEP. So as they're building relationship with cadet and find out, oh, they're struggling in a particular class, they can send them to us as well. So, you know, to that end, we on average do about 5,000 individual appointments with cadets with, and I don't think we've yet gone full strength into an academic year with 15 or 16 staff and faculty in CEP. We do a lot of one-on-one appointments with cadets on top of teaching multiple courses to kind of get the skills and build those skills that CEP, you know, teaches. That is quite an impressive number. That 5,000 a year, an academic year. Of, yeah. Wow. And like of you said, you do group on top of that and classes mm-hmm. that are also. Yes. And then you, I mean, I've seen even classes for faculty that they can jump in and on as well, right? Like the speed reading and that you support some faculty when they can sneak in as well, right? To Absolutely. To, yeah, in fact, so. I, I taught the class once and it was open to cadets and staff and faculty. And I had all staff and faculty. I had coaches. I had, it just happened to be that I taught a section with no cadets in it. So (laughs) we've even geared one of our speed reading courses to staff and faculty offering it in that, you know, deans or comms hour after lunch and truncated it a little bit just so we can get through the most of the content a little faster with them. Mm -hmm. And so most of our folks go from around 250 to 300 words a minute to around a thousand words a minute after anywhere from five to, to 10 hours of training. Incredible. And what a help for them for as they're starting, you know, putting out published papers and everything else, trying to meet their benchmarks for academic excellence as instructors. So, and Kat, maybe you want to talk a little bit about the work that we do yeah. with Opted. Yeah. So, so the so along with like the classes, QR code, things like that, another thing that brings cadets into the CEP is, I mean, is the egg chairs, right? <laughs> like we do, they're well known. So cadets come in and come through for that. And then sometimes we can then kind of get them into something else because of that. We also have- and that's, a, I'm going to interrupt you there. Yeah, can yeah. you just explain for anybody that doesn't yes. know, what is that? What like, is an egg chair? Yes. Egg so chair. Our, yeah. <laughs> our egg chairs, the formal name for them are alpha chambers. They are very comfortable, ergonomically designed chairs so that they kind of support the body in a kind of relaxation mode. But the key is that they've got speakers and they're sort of encapsulated. So kind of, they used to all be white. So they looked like big eggshells. And that's why cadets started calling them egg chairs. And so they have speakers in them. And so what we do is we play uh, relaxation scripts through the speakers. And one of the popular ones called autogenic relaxation, but uh, the research suggests that 12 to 15 minutes of that kind of like deliberate recovery where we're having our, our brain kind of take our body through a recovery process uh, is roughly equivalent to the energy you'd gain from like an hour nap. So it's all about kind of uh, deliberate recovery, deliberate energization. Yep. Yep. So that's the egg chairs and they're drop in hours. So what's great is that we have a couple of performance psychology interns. And so they can, cadets can come by anytime, eight to four and use an egg chair. And along with that, we have our mental training lab as well. So we've got some other kind of toys and things in the mental training lab. I was talking about the virtual reality. We've got some other, we've got a tennis ball machine that just chucks tennis balls at people and the reflection boards, like light up drills. But uh, again, that's drop-in hours where cadets can just come and do some mental training without even having to make an individual uh, appointment with us. So that's another point of entry. The other thing that that the performance tech team, we do a lot of being in cadet spaces. So we do work with or support some of the core squad teams. And so we'll go and we might be at practice or a game or do team sessions with them. And so we kind of, we like that holistic approach to get integrated that way. Cadets know where to come to work with us. And the great part about that is because we're around. I, I will sometimes have a cadet that I'm, you know, from 
let's say the tennis team who we never talk about tennis, but they come and talk about survival swim or they come and talk about academics or something like that. So they just kind of know that point of contact. And we've used that as a model in terms of getting into some of the other spaces. So we'll go watch, you know, mill move or we'll be at the tower testing for survival swim. We go to every IOCT. So again, similar thing of just being in the space helps cadets see like, oh, okay. Oh, who's that person? Oh, they're, we can just have a, a quick, like two minute chat. And that allows them to then kind of get comfortable with us and then come more over to CEP. When we can get in their spaces and they see our faces, I think it really helps. So Crush Act, where do you think the future of this program is going here at West Point? What's next well, on the it, horizon? Yeah. When I think about where we've been and the spaces that we've kind of expanded into. I mentioned it before, but I really think the partnership, we fall under the dean. And so the link to the academic program has been rock solid. That expansion, not just from core squad sports, but into how can we help an ordinary cadet perform in the physical pillar, in what they have, and maybe it's in a club squad team, maybe it's in Sandhurst, you know, different. I think we've, we have done a really good job of expanding into those spaces. And when I think about the future for CEP, you know, when we think about overall wellness, I think we've got a lot of amazing prevention efforts going on at the academy around, you know, prevention of harmful behaviors and, you know, harmful decisions. The root skills that cadets learn in CEP around confidence, well, you know, that might be, you know, a different level of prevention. But if I'm confident, maybe I'm confident enough to say to someone, you know, that's not cool what you just said to me. You know, have you thought about that from my perspective? You know, you're more confident in that one-on-one conversation or more confident to intervene or to help somebody else make a good decision. And so that's, you know, when I think about where CEP is going, I think we are a great complement. We're a great entry into accessing other resources at the academy. And, and normalizing, you know, seeking that help. So coming to CEP to improve your performance doesn't really have a stigma around it. Mm-hmm. We have cadets who struggle to cadets who want to absolutely maximize everything that they're a part of, scholarships or, you know, an elite athlete. So on average, we have about 1,100 unique cadets come into CEP for something each year. That's 25% of the core of cadets. That's incredible to me. I, that's just an incredible number. A quarter of the core is coming through the door. That's that. I, great. Great. I, we love it. I'd love I mean, it to be more. And, right. Of course. Right. You know, we all but, want 100%, right? <laughs> yeah. We got it, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. but if I, I mean, it just shows how much cadets want to do well right? Like how that they're striving to do better. I think that's just a great testimony to to what a great body of core uh, is. You think about the outcomes for the academy, right? Demonstrating excellence is what we expect our graduates to do. Right. And we can be a part of that. I mean, we are certainly a part of the character development that cadets go through. So that live honorably and lead honorably peace. But, you know, to to fight and win our nation's wars is what we're charged with in the United States military. And so the skills that we teach, you know, contribute to, to that winning, you know, that ability to cope when maybe we fail. How do we grow from that as opposed to be, you know, Uh, defeated by that. You know, so all of those kind of intangible skills are things that, that we help cadets realize in themselves. And so, you know, when I think about where we're going, overall, understanding that your well-being is a skill and something 
that you can affect. You know, what that is, I can take charge of. I can take charge of my own well-being. And I think we are a great entry into accessing wellness resources that taking care of yourself and your own mental health and wellness is a really important thing to own. Mm -hmm. And so I think where CEP is going is helping to contribute to that effort in addition to development in the military, you know, academic and physical pillars. Well, that's great to yeah. hear. Well, thank you both for being on today. Really appreciate getting the inside look at this program, this department over in the library for cadets that are looking to check it out so we can get to 2730. 45, 55, and so right, on. Right by Starbucks, too. Yep. Oh, right. <laughs> Swing by. You can see, you, you'll see the egg chairs as you're walking by in the room there. But really do appreciate you both coming on and kind of giving us a little bit of overview as cadets start the semester and hopefully reach out and take advantage of some of the activities that you guys have going on in there. Thank, awesome. thank you so much for the opportunity, you know, to have this conversation we really appreciate it. We look for people to drop in. So I know we have even old grads walking through the library. We are open to show them the mental skills lab as well and, you know, introduce them to what we do in CEP. So mm -hmm. we look forward to, to seeing, you know, more people on their way through. Yeah. Thanks so much for having us. Really appreciate it. Anytime. Be Navy. Be Navy. Beat everyone. Yeah. No, no visualization for that. Just get it done. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Beat everybody. Thank you for listening to the WPA OG Broadcast Network. Please take a moment to rate and review the show and join us each week for a new episode. Thank you for listening.